San Francisco. Mason's introduction to a transsexual. <laughs> Can't you see we're not bothering anybody? I'm You're up here with your drunk ass for a rubber. You missed it a couple weeks ago when there was a shooting right around the corner. Try by shooting. We see a lot of misery down here. We see people dying. We see people who don't have enough really to make ends meet. Good afternoon, the ambassador. The hotel is, I think it's a total sanctuary for the area that we're living. I'm really thankful to have found it. Ambassador. The Ambassador Hotel is located in San Francisco's tough Tenderloin District. It's a residential hotel, open to anyone. Some people here have jobs, others are on welfare. And some have lived here since the late 70s. It's a mixed building, young and old, men and women, ex-cons, ex-professors, gays and straights. For a while, a young couple lived here with a baby. For a few, this hotel is a jumping off point to something better. But for many others, it's nothing more than a revolving door. They come across as very uh, aggressive and hostile and difficult, but it's a facade, and what they're really looking for is love and support. I have AIDS, so basically I live on move day by day, one day at a time. I thank the Lord for one night that I'm here, and I wake up and I say, thank you, Lord, and I'm here. There's a gentleman at the Ambassador Hotel that got mugged last night. Sort of the common denominator is that people are uh, at the low end of the economic scale. At any given time, approximately 200 people live in the Ambassador's 150 rooms. Uh, among those, about one-third are either HIV positive or have full-blown AIDS. But the ambassador is a special place for them because a number of social service agencies work out of here, giving help to people who need it the most. K-101, for lovers only. It feels important to proclaim to people in this community that God loves them. We're having baked chicken. Okay. And uh, corn. Okay. And potatoes tonight. Uh-oh, all this and this little thing? Can I get you to stand up? No. Yes. <laughs> Our people um, need need services, and there's no there's no reason why they can't have them just because they're in the tenderloin. You okay? Yeah. This is the best place, probably in the world, to get care. The agencies are staffed by people who are caregivers, social workers, nurses, a doctor, people we would call good Samaritans. All they want to do is help people who are sick and in need. This is a story about the most isolated and disenfranchised group affected by the AIDS epidemic. It's also about the caring and enlightened group of people who work difficult circumstances in the halls and the rooms of the Ambassador Hotel. Currently, I'm going to take my Satan pills down to a priest. So I won't think about taking all of them all at once to commit suicide. To do this work, you have to be willing to open your heart. Three people that we know from here that either were living here or had lived here in the past died in the last week. This is like the bottom line. You know, it's, it's their last stop. So either they get it together here or they stay here and die. Christopher, do you understand that it is important for you to have better, better hygiene for your own health? Yeah, no. No. This is... Hmm. 
I guess. Do you want me to talk to Tom to see if someone can help you clean the room? Yeah. Yeah. He's very sick, has a prognosis of less than six months. Uh, we brought him here to the ambassador because we thought that was the only way for him to be housed. What else do you need? No? No. I got cigarettes. Yes. We thought, well, either we bring him to the ambassador or he will be on the streets. As you can see, the ambassador probably is not, it's not at all the best place for anybody to be in. But at least we thought with his drug problem, he will be able to be here, have his drugs if he wants to. But at the same time, he will receive basic medical care. He will have access to us very easily. It's very difficult for him to go to the clinic. Uh, not only difficult, but he really doesn't care. Victoria Sanabria is the social worker for the Tom Waddell Clinic. She's been working in the Ambassador for the last three years. Because of his AIDS diagnosis, she took Christopher to the hotel's AIDS office, AIDS Indigent Direct Services, to make sure he was getting the help for which he was eligible. And therefore, as a social worker, I think that it's my responsibility to help people that have such a great need to at least have access to the basics. We prefer that he came down and stuff, we need to see him each morning so that we know he's all right. All right. So you have to calm down every morning, okay? In Christopher's case, it's difficult because he really never states what he needs. He's always, oh no, I don't need that, I don't care for that. As long as he has his drugs, everything is fine. You need some ventilation. Do you want me to open the window a little bit? Uh, no, it's cold. Christ yeah, Christopher, but you know, this is not good for your health. Huh? At all. It's not even a matter of having the room clean. It's a matter of health, Christopher. Let me see where do you have your medication, especially the septra. That's what I want to see. Do you have any syringes here, Christopher? No, are you totally sure? I am going to call VNH today. This cannot be possible, Christopher. You need a medicine to put all your medication so you can take them, and especially the septra. You don't even know where it is, and you cannot afford to be without it. Do you remember the pneumonia? Yeah, I know. Okay, and this is why it is so important for you to take it. So I'm going to tell Dr. Black to give you the prescription, all right, at least for septra. Right. Okay. Okay. Okay, Christopher. So see you probably next Monday. Otherwise, you go to the clinic if you need anything. <laughs> Christopher. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care of yourself. Okay. Bye-bye. My view of a lot of people that live here is that they like never had some chance on some big level. Like most of the people that I know here had really smashed up lives as children, right, like really course. smashed up, like raped, beaten, um, adopted, alone, abandoned. abandoned, right? So that was their childhood. And then their teenage years were either drugs or prison, or both. Or both. And then now their 20s and 30s are this life's like the drugs, the prison scene, and now adding HIV. You know, and it's like everybody has their story. Pam, what's her beginning? Oh, well, my father shot my mother. She died in my arms. As she was dying, she begged me to look out for my siblings. So they take us away. They put him in prison. They send me to foster homes. He comes out of prison, and they give him, they give us back to him. He raped me for three years. Now, does it hurt when you breathe at all? You ain't breathing hard. It's just hmm? a, got an internal, like a... Popping? Uh, yeah, like a vacuum popping inside. Mm -hmm. On this, this left oh. side. So they ain't punching my lung yet. The first man I ever saw here was a Korean-American man that had been in a residential hospice and said he wanted to come back here because the hospice reminded him of prison with too many rules. And he came back here and lived for like another year. And then 
chose to die here with his friends and family. Well, actually, we were his family. Right, so you don't have like a sharp pain when you breathe. No, I, I'm used to that. I've never heard that before. Yeah, you're right. So that's not what it is. It's going they to. They just messed up your ribs. Many of the people who have died here have no one to notify at the time of death. And those are the people I particularly feel a sense of responsibility to hold their memory um, in this world. You know, doesn't have a severe headache, hasn't had any loss of consciousness, doesn't have any blurred vision, nausea, vomiting, etc. Um, so I was going to just try to get him to agree to come in tomorrow. Does that sound safe enough? There's a lot that can be done. Like, for me, I come from a hospice nurse background, right? So I was used to, you know, working people the last six months of their life, getting them comfortable and helping them, like, depart this earth in some kind of reasonable fashion. And to be able to be here and to support people to have enough food to eat, to be somewhat, you know, cleaned up and together if they choose, and to feel like they have somebody, if they don't want to be alone, that they have somebody that they can count on and to keep, help people be comfortable who are used to getting kind of shabby treatment, I think, and some attitude from a lot of the medical establishment around their pain. That's like a really great thing. So maybe that's the common denominator, you know, is a lack of uh, a judgment, you know, a lack of judgmentalness and a willingness to help. Maybe that's a common denominator for all the care providers here and a willing to just dive in, you know. Here we are. Let's start with like what's before us, you know. Guys in the tub, you get them out.